I am sorry, no memes today. Aha! I have fools of April with you. So you might notice I have new guitar here. My good friends at Ernie Ball decided to send me their brand new Ernie Ball Music Man Majesty. It is ridiculously nice. Like, I don't feel like I'm worthy of holding this. It is smooth like butter. It is so comfortable. It plays very well and it sounds incredible. You will hear in a second. Okay, so to start I'm going to show you a very, very basic riff. It is based around the Phrygian scale. Um, pretty much, even if you don't want to learn the scale, just know that it revolves around 0, 1, 3, those frets, and then the octave higher, 12, 13, 15, and then also 10. Things like that, okay? So if you want to follow along, go ahead. I am in drop A. You can do this in any tuning, does not matter, but that's where my patterns would lie. But anyways, let me show you very, very basic riff, all modern metalcore, pretty much based off this kind of stuff nowadays. But yeah, I'll show you in context. Okay, so very cool thing to do is actually take single notes in your riff and instead turn them into full chords. Now, let me explain. Let's say we have a riff that's like this. Well, let's take this last note and instead of it just being in holding on there, let's turn it into a full fun chord. Now you might ask me, Nick, I don't know chord theory, how do I do this? Well, if you know a little bit of music theory when it comes to scales and you know the minor scale, things like that, it's very easy. You just take these low notes and then you pick a couple other random notes from your scale. So let's say, let's add those notes and then you just combine them all together. Boom, you have a chord. I don't know what it is called. That is fine, but it is in your scales so it will sound like it fits. Let me show you. Boom, so much more life, right? Even simple power chords is fine, okay? I show you in context. Next thing I want to show you is what I like to call string skipping. Now as guitarists, when we create riffs on one string, usually if we want to add additional notes on a different string, we only go one string higher or one string lower to find those notes. Let me show you. So that's on lowest string. If I want to add more notes to that, I'd usually go to the string right above it. Like that. Well, with string skipping, what I'm talking about is making even bigger leaps in terms of pitches. So things like this. Right, so those are very, very big leaps. Those aren't just one string to the string above it. I'm skipping strings in between to create those very unique kind of notes, those weird intervals, okay? So if you want to try this, start by maybe just doing it with octave skipping, so like this. Things like that are like this. Right, where you're just kind of going with specific octaves, but it is not limited to just octaves, okay? Bands like Architects use this a lot, so if you want to be another carbon copy, go ahead, but it is very, very useful tool to try out, okay? I show you. Okay, next one, we talk about hammer-ons and pull-offs. Very simple, but very effective. So, to start off, pick a note, doesn't matter. And then let's say you want to hit a different note, but instead of strumming that different note, you just let it go. Like that, you hammer it on. So you strum first note, then you hammer on second. Like that, and then pull off is kind of opposite. So with that second note, you are then going to pull it literally off. And then when you combine them, and that is when you get a little faster, right? So let me show you in context. Okay, next one we are going to talk about one of my favorites, harmony. 
Now there are many different types of harmonies, so if you want to go learn that, go to Berkeley, have some fun, okay? But we're going to focus on the most important one, which is called third harmony, okay? So this takes slight scale knowledge, but is very, very easy to understand once you really get it, okay? So let's just take a very basic scale where we go like this, five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, five. Okay, minor scale, whatever. Now, each of those notes have kind of their own value, right? This is the first note, second note, third note, four, five, six, seven, you know? So that's not fret numbers, that's just the order of note we are playing. Well, the rule of harmony is that whenever you are picking a note you are playing within the scale, so if you're playing the first note in your scale, well, the other guitarist then will play plus two to that note. So if you're playing the first note, add plus two to that, they will then be playing the third note. So one guitarist will be going one, the other guitarist will be going third note, right? So together, these two notes are in harmony. So if one guitarist plays a riff like this, which is first note, second note, third note of the scale, the other guitarist will then be playing third note, fourth note, fifth note of the scale at the same time. So he will be playing this, or same thing, right? Um, together, they sound like this. So that is how harmony works. It's a little confusing, again, if you don't fully know scales, but I hope that made sense. I'll show you in context. Okay, next one I think is one of the most important ways to really innovate your riffs and it really, really changes how it sounds, okay? I think the technical term is called chromaticism, but you could just call it adding random notes to what you are playing. Now that sounds a little confusing because you might be like, Nick, don't we have to stay in key? Don't we have to stay on our scales? And yes, that is true to a certain point, but if you choose to maybe pick one of those notes in your scales and maybe go one fret lower, so instead of 12, let's go 11, Whoa, in our riff, and then you play the whole riff with just that one changed note, sometimes it adds a very, very cool effect. Let me show you first basic, right? So here's basic. Right, that's just minor. Now I'm gonna start switching some of these notes randomly, maybe going one fret lower, one fret higher, and you're gonna see how it sounds completely different. Right, so it's not so much thinking of scales and different scales, even though that's technically what you can do, it's more so just thinking off top head, let's try a note that's lower, note that is higher, and make it sound very chromatic. Okay? It takes some guesswork, but the more you get used to it, the easier it will be to make really badass riffs, okay? i show you in context. Now, a very popular one to use is called palm mutes, okay? So instead of playing a riff that sounds like this, very basic, right, everything is open, you can instead turn it into this. Right? It sounds very aggressive, a lot more power, even though you're playing the same notes, same rhythm, pretty much everything. So palm muting, very easy. You take side of palm right here, you put it near bridge, and you kind of put a little bit of pressure, not too much. And you can kind of hear how it's developing when you just use it on the open string, right? So here's without palm mute. And then slowly start to mute it. And then you can put more pressure when you're actually picking to really dig in. And boom. Much more power, much more metal. I show you in context. Next one is very popular in modern metal. It is called tapping. Now, tapping is much more simple than people think. Okay, so to start, let's pick random note on high string. So let's say fifth fret, right? So this is normal on left hand. But then right hand, instead of plucking it, you're going to be using your right hand fingers, all right? And now you can start with your middle finger or your index finger, whatever is more comfortable at first. I started with middle finger, but regardless, you have to build the callus on these because it can very much hurt if you do not be careful and you play too much at first, okay? So you take left hand here, right hand pick random note, go 12th fret, that's fine. 
And what you're going to be doing is with your finger, you're going to actually be doing hammer-ons and pull-offs. That was what we talked earlier. Hammer-on, oh, hammer-on, pull-off. Hammer-on, pull-off. Hammer-on, pull-off. Hammer-on, pull-off. Right? And once you get better and better at that simple way, then you get a little more experimental. Right? You get faster, you can do it on low string. Right, so if you want to be Era's little brother, there you go. Tapping is pretty much the key for that. And it can really spice up your riffs. I'll show you in context. So this last one actually involves using different scales and unique scales, right? Now I know a lot of people don't like music theory, but trust me, if you can just start learning it and try to find a way to understand it, it will help so much create very, very unique riffs that aren't the boring, you know, usual since, you know, 2005, okay? So to start off, you know, let's say we have riff like this, right? Right, same metalcore riff. Well, let's say now I want to transpose that maybe a little bit into harmonic minor. Well, I know harmonic minor note is very, is very close to the regular note, it's just one fret lower. And the rest of the scale is the same. So now I can create this. Already sounds much more different, much more exciting. Let's say we want to do Phrygian dominant. Let's say diminished scale. Right, same kind of rhythm, same kind of patterns, but they're in a different scale, makes it sound a lot more different, gives more life to it. So it's very similar to kind of chromaticism, but without the guessing work, right? And it's actually transposing the entire melody instead of just maybe a few notes. So I recommend go check out some of your scales and try to learn the best you can. But I'll show you in context. Now these are just 8 tips to help you, but there are tons more that I even mentioned in my How to Make Amazing Breakdowns video that you can use in riffs as well, such as the Bow Wow, Lo-Fi, Dissonance, Triplets and much more. So if you're interested in much more learning, be sure to check out that video as well. But for now, we're just going to use the ones I discussed and combine them all and you're going to see how that basic riff at the start really transformed into something much more exciting. Now, of course, you don't have to use all of these at the same time. It's a little excessive, but you can if you want. Maybe just choose one, maybe choose a couple to excite your normal riffs. But um, yeah, obviously don't use all of these because it can, it can be too much. Hope you guys liked that video. If you did, be sure to hit subscribe button down below and be sure to comment what some of your favorite ways to innovate riffs are, as well as what you want to see from me next in the How To series. I want to give special thanks to Ernie Ball for sending me this beast to play around with. Can't wait to use it more. And I also want to give special thanks to a few Patreons. Chris, Eric, Jerry, Matthew, Mel, Serena, Dave, Dylan, White, Patrick, Austin, Roy, Jose, Alex, Fu, Jacob, Brent. Christian, Cory, Chiara, Cory, Caleb, Michael, Johnny, Robert, Storm, Gareth, Andreas, Dallas, Mohan, Mike, Patrick, Alan, Alvis, Gitan, Chris, Connor, Alexis, Philip, Nick, Ryan, Brad, Bram, Damian, and Shiran. Thank you all so much for support. It really helps our channel. If you yourself are interested in becoming Patreon, there's going to be a link on screen and description. You get access to cool things such as tabs and lots more. Go check it out. Thank you all for watching. I see you next time.